I spoke a short time ago with Dr. Ashish Shah, Dean of the Brown University School of Public Health, and I began by asking about the CDC's revised estimates on the prevalence of the Omicron variant. In a quickly moving pandemic, you're always going to have these kinds of estimates that get revised as more data comes in. So not totally surprised to see this. It was a pretty substantial revision down, uh, suggesting that there's still a lot of Delta out there. Uh, there's at least one potential upside to this estimate change, which is a lot of the hospitalizations we're seeing right now may be from Delta. Should the CDC have done a better job of communicating that its estimates about Omicron's prevalence were subject to change? I do actually think that they should have done a better job communicating the confidence interval, sort of, you know, how much uncertainty there was in the data. Uh, I know many people sort of took it at face value, but it was an estimate based on relatively small samples. Let's talk about those new CDC guidelines. So much of the new guidelines are built around trusting people to be honest about when they're asymptomatic. Do you think the new isolation guidelines are enough to keep people safe when they're based on the honor system? Well, I think they're a step in the right direction. And even if you think about our current isolation guidelines, 10 days, also based on the honor system. But I think it's a step in the right direction. I, I wish the CDC had also added in uh, getting a negative test before ending isolation. And as we just heard in Sam Brock's piece in New York City, the country's biggest school system, they're actually eliminating quarantine rules for classrooms with a positive case. Instead, they plan to ramp up testing. Is that enough, do you think, to keep children and teachers safe, Dr. Shaw? Well, the evidence on this is actually surprisingly quite good. Um, there's this thing called test and stay. Uh, test and stay suggests that when you have a kid who might be positive, you don't have to take the whole class out and put them into quarantine. If you can give tests to everybody else on a regular basis, you can bring kids and teachers back into school safely without causing much spread. Many people are learning they're infected when they take at-home rapid tests. Should there be a requirement to report at-home tests? I would actually love to see such a requirement. It would make an enormous difference in our ability to track how much infection there is. Uh, it's very clear at this point that we are substantially undercounting the size of this outbreak across the country. How many cases do you think the official number may be? At the height of last year, the worst day of the pandemic, we had about 250,000 infections a day in the U.S. Uh, I am confident right now we have many, many more infections than that. It's hard to know the exact number, but we could easily be at twice that number and maybe even higher in the next you know, week or two. When do you expect this surge to peak? My hope is that in the next couple of weeks, we see a peaking of cases. It'll probably vary from state to state, but nationally a peaking of cases and then hopefully turning down and hopefully climbing down very, very quickly. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.